of the meeting before I take the sedum. I will now take the sedum for this meeting with the Clyde Valley Land and Development Joint Committee held on the 26th of June 2023. We have apologies from Councillor Andrew Anderson and the following members are all present. Councillors Anne McTaggart, Francesca Brennan, Angela Campbell and Lindsay Hamilton. Thank you and I'll now pass you back to the convener for today's business. Thanks Stuart, that's great. Um, any declarations of interest? Nope. Um, I'll, number two is changes to and membership to the Joint Committee and Project, um, pages three to six. And I will ask Stuart to take us through this paper. Thank you. You're on mute, Stuart. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the one that's trying to give everybody else any trouble for doing that. Uh, thanks, Camille. The report advises of Councillor Hamilton's return as a member representing South Lanarkshire Council and as convener of the Joint Committee in terms of paragraph 3.6 of the Minute of Agreement. The report also advises that Renfrewshire Council has changed from a full member to a participating member of the project, which means it is no longer represented on the Joint Committee. As noted in the report, this has resulted in the membership of the Joint Committee being reduced to five councils, which is the minimum number required in terms of the Minute of Agreement. Dundee City Council has also confirmed that it's continuing as a participating member of the project and, as noted at paragraph 6.1, the financial implications of the changes to the project membership are covered in the Revenue Budget Monitoring Report at item 4 on the agenda. The minute of agreement and standing orders on procedures will require to be updated to reflect the change in membership of the Joint Committee and the standing orders will also be subject to a wider review. These updated documents will be reported to the next meeting of the Joint Committee. This report is for noting only as per the recommendations detailed at paragraph 2.1 of the report. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Um, any members have questions or comments? Nope. Um, I will ask um, for the report to be noted and if I get a seconder. Francesca. <laughs> yeah, happy to second. I saw, I spotted <laughs> Anne's hand up, but I'm more than oh, sorry. happy to oh. second. Sorry, sorry. That was <laughs> oh, I'm now putting my hat. Oh God, but it's all going wrong. <laughs> No, no. That's we're, we're so we're so in approval of the report. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I'll ask uh, the, the to be agreed then. Um, number agenda item number three is minutes of previous meeting. Um, are we all in agreement? Yep. Ask for a seconder. <laughs> Thank you. Um, agenda item number four is Revenue Budget Monitoring Clyde Valley Learning Development Joint Committee for 2023-24, which is pages 15 to 18. And can I ask Jackie Taylor to take this report, please? Thank, Thank you. Convener. So this is, um, we're going to take a bit of a trip through time today. So this first report is for our current financial year. Um, this is the first revenue monitoring report that we've presented to the, the Joint Committee this year. Um, we are very early on in the year, so as you would expect, there's not much in terms of the way of reporting financially. I would draw your attention to Section 3.3, which refers to the fact that um, at the February meeting of the Joint Committee, 13 councils had confirmed their membership position for the year. Um, that took our total membership contribution to £67,000. And as we've just covered in that last paper that Stuart took us through, we've now had confirmation from Renfrewshire that they will be a um, participating member and they will contribute £4,000 along with Dundee City Council as well. So our total membership contributions is £75,000 this year. Um, at section 3.4, we are saying that we're adding to that £75,000 member contribution estimate of training expenditure of £25,000, which brings our budget for the year to £100,000. And Appendix A shows the normal report that details down our budget. And as I mentioned, um, up to uh, the 19th of May, which is when this report is covering, we have um, limited variances to show you um, our report on. So 
in terms of recommendations, we're asking that the break-even position, as noted in the report, be noted. Thanks very much. Thanks, convener. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I will ask if there's any questions or comments. Nope. Um, can I have the report? Oh, yep, Jerry. Sorry, on you go. Um, just as an observation, um, convener, if I could just say, um, just in relation to to the, the numbers and the and particularly paragraph three point three that Jackie has um highlighted, um, it is we are now at the point where. We have the minimum number of of members, full members, uh, at five, and and we've always had a bit of leeway there because of that that um, borderline, so to speak. So it's certainly something for as we move forward with the project that we need to take take cognizance of that yeah. and and consider, uh, you know, the, the implications if, for example, another council was to take a different decision uh, regarding full membership. So it's really just to, to point that out for the members of the committee that uh, we are right down now to the threshold yeah. level. Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, so obviously that's a bit, a bit concerning, um, but hopefully we'll... Um, Nobody else will, will leave, yeah. <laughs> or its demise will be under m m me, my <laughs> chairship. But <laughs> I hope it's not to be me. But I, that's thank you for pointing that out. Um, I'll ask if there's um, if I, the report can be approved, and can I have a seconder, please? Yeah, thanks, Francesca. Um, can. Um, I move on to agenda item number six, um, which, oh, not five, sorry, annual governance statement, pages 19 to 24, and that's Jackie as well. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, convener. So this is where I take you back in time to the, the last uh, financial year, 22-23, and there's a couple of papers in this pack that will allow us to, to, to close off the accounts for 22-23. This first paper is the annual governance statement. And what we are requiring is that this is approved and then we will include that within our pack of accounts that go to the auditor. This is why this paper becomes uh, here in the agenda um, before the accounts are, are noted. Um, a bit of background tells you what the, the governance uh, statement is. We undertake a review of our, our governance arrangements every year and then we prepare this governance statement that we can then report to yourselves to show that we're, we're confident about the governance arrangements of the joint committee. Um, the actual statement itself is attached to Appendix 1 for your information. Um, but probably the, the, the comfort that I can give you is that we do have a strong um, internal financial control system um, for the joint committee. It mirrors the, the control system that we have in South Lanarkshire Council and therefore we can take the comfort from, from that. Um, at section 4.4 .4 on page 20, we do report that internal audit don't actually carry out any specific works for the joint committee. However, we can also rely on the internal audit manager's assurance for South Lanarkshire Council um, and apply that to the, the Clyde Valley Learning and Development Joint Committee as well. So at 4.5, I'm, I'm stating that I'm, I have reasonable assurance that we can um, place on the adequacy and the effectiveness of the committee's framework for governance, risk management and control arrangements. And that should give you the confidence to approve this report. So if I take you back to the recommendations, we're asking that the governance statement, which is attached to Appendix 1, be approved for inclusion in the joint committee's accounts. Thanks, convener. Thanks, Jackie. Um, any comments or questions? Nope. Um, I'll ask for a seconder. Thank you. <laughs> and I ask for the report to be approved. Thank you very much. I'll move on to agenda item number six, which is the Clyde Valley and Development Joint Committee annual audit um, plan, which is pages 25 to 40, and this is uh, Donna Rigby from Account uh, Audit Scotland. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the paper presented today outlines the work that we carry out um, for the 2022-23 external audit of Clyde Valley Learning Development Joint Committee. At the last meeting of the Joint Committee in February, we presented our audit strategy letter. Following this, we issued the annual audit plan by the target date of the 31st of March, once our planning procedures were complete. Therefore, I'll take this paper as read, but I'd like to highlight just a few key areas. Firstly, a risk-based approach is used when planning our work. 
The only significant risk of material misstatement for the Joint Committee in 22-23 that we identified is set out in Exhibit 2 of the Annual Audit Plan, and this is found on page 30-31 to 31 of the Agenda Pack. This risk is the risk of management override of controls, and it's mandated by the International Standards on Auditing, and it's a standard risk across all audits. Exhibit 2 also sets out how we're going to address this risk in our work. As required by the Audit Code of Practice, we also consider wider dimensions as part of our annual audit work. We consider the Joint Committee to be a less complex body and therefore a smaller audited body provision of the Code can be applied to the 22-23 audit. This means that our wider dimensions work will focus on the appropriateness of the disclosures in the annual governance statement and the financial sustainability of the body. I'd also like to highlight the materiali materiality levels um, for the Joint Committee, which are set out in Exhibit 1 on page 29 of the Agenda Pack. And finally, Exhibit 4 on page 34 sets out the timetable for the audit in 22-23. So we intend to bring the annual audit report to the Joint Committee at the next meeting, which will be on the 11th of September. And this is within our statutory deadline of the 30th of September. So the engagement lead for the audit, Pauline Murray, is also in attendance today and we're happy to take any questions that you might have on the plan or the audit process. Thanks. Thanks, Donna. Um, that's great. Have we got any questions or comments at all? No. No bother. Thank you very much for attending, Donna. Um, I'll ask for the audit plan for a seconder, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, and can I ask the um, the group to um, agree the report? Thank you very much. Um, I'll move on to agenda item number seven, which is the 2022-23 annual report and accounts um, from, and that is pages 41 to 68. And I'll ask Jackie to take this again. Thanks. Thank you, convener. So this is the, the second report that I referred to earlier. <coughs> this is now picking up on our actual <coughs> annual report and accounts. Um, as you would expect, every year we have to prepare and submit our annual accounts to our auditor, who is Audit Scotland. And Appendix 1 to the report gives our full annual accounts and report for your information. Um, while the, the reports themselves include a lot of um, accounting uh, reports, they include the, the main financial statements, there are some contextual information there as well within the, the annual report and accounts. And you can see that at section 3.2, the um, elements of um, what we include within our accounts. So management commentary is the part that will be of interest to you all that actually talks about the good work that the Joint Committee has done this year. And the annual governance statement is the document that we agreed earlier on. Then the rest of the, the, the bullets there at section 3.2, you will see our main accounting uh, statements and related notes that were required to produce as part of a set of accounts. At section five, we cover, cover the financial implications. And the main um, piece of, of, of information that I would draw your attention to is at section 5.2, where we're reporting that once we've taken account of all the commitments that we have, it leaves a revenue cash balance of £34,000 for the Joint Committee, which can be carried forward for use in future years. So if I take you back to the recommendations, we're asking that the report and accounts for the Joint Committee be noted and that it's noted that these will be submitted to our external auditor by the 30th of June. Thanks, convener. Thanks, Jackie. Um, any comments or questions at all? Nope. No bother. Um, and I'll ask for that. I second it and for the committee to agree the report. Yeah, agreed. No bother. Um, so there's no items of urgent business um, being intimated. Um, but just before we finish, I understand this is uh, Jill Batty's last meeting before she leaves uh, the council. So I would just like to thank um, Jill for all her work with the committee over a number of years and wish you good luck in whatever you're going to do from now on. OK, but thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. <laughs> no bother, Jill. Um, and I'll ask uh, Stuart to stop the recording of the meeting and say goodbye to you all. Have a good day.
Thanks, Kavina. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.